this antique side-by-side -side Parker shotgun is an 11 gauge. Let's take a look at this rare gun. It's an extremely early example, made about 1870. Parker Brothers was the first American company to make double barrel shotguns starting in 1869. And this one has a three digit serial number, 284. It's referred to as a lifter model as it's opened by lifting the latch in front of the trigger guard. Only the Parker Brothers shotguns made before 1874 had back action locks where the mainspring is behind the hammer. Later guns had front action locks where the mainspring is located in front of the hammer. This gun is in the rare 11 gauge chambering and as far as I know Parker was the only American manufacturer to have made shotguns in this gauge and only for a few years. Parker also offered guns in 8 and 14 gauges. Since I'd like to shoot this gun, it must have a thorough inspection. The first thing I notice is that the lifter must be pushed in to close the gun. The lifter on a properly functioning Parker is locked in the up position when the gun is opened making it easier to close. I remove the forend by sliding out the key. On guns of this vintage, almost all the parts are numbered. These barrels still retain their original Belgium proof marks, as that's where these twist steel barrels were made. Although there is a bit of play between the barrels and the receiver, a condition commonly known as off the face, this gun's slight looseness doesn't make it unsafe to shoot. The barrels are removed by opening the action and unhooking them from the receiver. Pinging the barrels verifies the ribs are tight as they ring like they should have on the day they were made. This gun has rebounding locks and the locks and firing pins work fine. The screws are removed and the locks are lifted out. All the internal parts appear to be original and the locks are nice and clean on the inside. Now the trigger guard screws are removed. The front screw appears to be a replacement as it doesn't have any engraving. I hold in the lifter and unscrew the trigger guard from the trigger plate. Next, the trigger plate screws are removed, followed by the button on the lifter then the tang screw. Now the trigger plate and the buttstock can be removed. With the trigger plate off, I see there's a small coil spring missing, the purpose of which is to hold up the lifter lock. I continue to disassemble the receiver and inspect each of the parts. With everything disassembled, the parts are thoroughly cleaned and oiled. A new spring for the lifter lock is clipped from a length of coil spring stock. Now I can reassemble the receiver. Since I'm planning on shooting this gun, I'm going to have to make the ammunition for it. To determine the gauge, I first tried a 10 gauge brass shell, but it wouldn't enter the chamber. And a 12 gauge shell was a little loose. So that's when I realized it must be an 11 gauge. 11 gauge shells are not readily available, and Parker only chambered a few shotguns in this gauge. When you're unsure, the best way to determine the gauge is to make a cast of the chamber. With the barrels firmly in the vise, I push a fiber wad into the bore just in front of the chamber. Cerosafe is the alloy of choice for chamber casting, and modeling clay will keep the hot liquid out of the extractor cut. The Cerosafe melts easily with a propane torch and once melted, the chamber is filled to the top. After cooling, I use a cleaning rod to tap out the casting. Now I can measure it and spec out the dimensions for the new brass shotgun shells. A piece of one inch brass rod is tightened in the lathe chuck and the brass is drilled and reamed for a 10 gauge wad, which is correct for this shotgun. Next, the brass is turned to the correct outside diameter. The rod is swapped in for end, and the case head turned. 
Now the flash hole and primer pocket can be drilled. A modified drill bit cuts the bottom of the primer pocket flat and I cut a slight chamfer on the outside. The new cases drop right into the chambers. I want to mark the case heads so they closely duplicate the original Parker 11 gauge shells. I've made up a stencil for this and the marking is applied using an electrochemical etching machine. With four sample cases made up, it's time to load them. I'm going to use some original loading tools, including an adjustable powder and shot measure, and a wide guide and ram. I'll also need reloading components, powder, primers, shot, and wads, and some glue to hold the overshot wad in place. I prime the cases using a shell holder made here in the shop. The large rifle primer is pushed into the primer pocket till it's just below flush. This adjustable dipper will measure the powder. Three drams. The black powder is scooped and poured in. These will be very mild loads. Parker originally recommended three drams of powder and one and one eighth ounces of shot for a gun that weighed under eight pounds. Next, the overpowder wad. It's a 10 gauge wad, which is correct for these shells. Now press it firmly against the powder. The cushion wad is next. It acts like a shock absorber for the shot to help keep it round for truer flight. I adjust this dipper to throw one and one eighth ounces of shot, again, as per the original Parker load data. Last is the overshot wad, which I press into place. Now the factories would have filled the case to the top with wads and crimped the end of the case to hold the overshot wad, but it isn't necessary to fill the case to the top. One alternative is to glue the wad in place with an old fashioned glue called water glass. A small quantity around the edge of the wad is fine and it sets up in a few hours. Now I can go shooting. <laughs>